Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great. And for anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. In today's episode, we are continuing on with our VGC Series 9 content, featuring a very cool team from a Japanese player uh, who actually won a team tournament with this over in Japan recently. Lati underscore Poke uh, is the username handle on Twitter. They've also got a blog page as well where they've gone into detail about the team build and they've got other information on there about previous teams that they've done give them a, a follow on twitter if you like the look of this team because they're always innovating creating really cool content really cool teams and uh, definitely check out the blog as well it gives you a bit more of an in-depth uh idea behind the build of the team so this is a team that we're going to feature today as always we'll have a couple of games of the team uh, and then we'll finish off with the rental at the end but before we get into anything today i've got a big big question for you all so one of the things that i wanted to ask you all was i've put a poll up on the community section of the channel asking you all for a uh, a vote really if you want to see series 9 going forward or do you want to start to see series 10 i would love to get into series 10 i've been playing it a lot on the legacy uh, showdown server um, and i feel like it would be good we could do a mixture of kind of free ladder battles potentially it might be a little bit difficult but hopefully not and then showdown as well uh, where we can start playing series 10 and start getting teams together ideas together start the discussion about series 10 or if you're happy enough if we get enough votes of course i'm going to do whatever you guys want because it's what it's all about uh, we'll continue on with series 9 until the end of july so it's up to you but if you do go across to the poll do drop a vote on it it would be much appreciated it gives me an idea of what you guys want to see going forward for the rest of this month because i do understand Series 9 is a little bit still. It's very fun at all the same time, but when you know what the next rule set is and you're looking forward to it, sometimes you feel like, I want to put the question out there. So that's what we've done. Also, friends, just before we get into today's episode, this week over on our Patreon, we are starting our Series 10 friendly. So they're weekly tournaments that we run every single week on a Friday evening, and they are open to anyone to enter. So if you want to get involved and get start your practicing with Series 10, then I will throw up the ID on the screen right now, and you can hop over to the Discord as well. Join the Discord. It will be in the, let me check which channel it is in. Uh, if you check out the Flinch Squad weeklies, uh, they will be, all the information will be in there, the weekly announcements, and then follow along with the tournament, how it's going in the competitive chat or in the weekly tournament chat as well, which is quite a buzz on a Friday evening. So if you want to get some Series 10 practice in, it is starting this Friday and we'll be running every Friday up until the series reverts over uh, to Series 10 officially on the 1st of August. And then we'll be continuing on from there with some other tournaments in mind as well to keep us all up to date and uh, practice ready i guess so yeah thanks for tuning in hope to see you there on friday okay to the team now we're looking forward to playing this lots of stuff on here we've got the venus or the heatran it's all based and started from the conkledur which i love uh, we've got the tyranitar the dustclops and the thunderous and without further ado friends we'll get into our first match of today first up today we have a whimsicott charizard torkoal venusaur indeedy female and corviknight so a pretty solid sun team with the redirection with indeedy terrain support there as well and then Corviknight. So, um, what are we going to do against this team? I feel like Thunderous is pretty good here. Obviously, Titar very good here as well. We've got to be careful around the Trick Room if we go that route because the, the Torkoal really thrives under the Trick Room environment. I don't know if this is one so much for Conkledur, um, just because, you know, you're threatened by the Airstream. Uh, the, the Corviknight gives you a lot of issues. The Indeedee gives you a lot of issues, the special attacks in general, the uh, Whimsicott. There's lots of reasons why not to bring Gonk in this game, so I don't feel like it's the most preferable option. Um, let's just have a quick gander at the uh, Thunderous, because it's that busy talking about the pole. I didn't really get to see too much, but the, um, the Assault Vest there, quite nice. So that gives us a little bit of stability, I guess, against against the Venusaur. Um, we could bring our own Venusaur as well. That might be a nice option. Uh, I do like the idea of Heatran here. Um, and we could kind of pivot between Venusaur, Heatran, um, and Titar, I think, is probably going to be the, the big thing for us. And we're probably looking at maybe Titar or Thunderous as our kind of Max Mons. But if we can remove the sun, then the Charizard's way less threatening. Uh, Got to worry about Sleep Powder and Venusaur as always in this format. And this is going to be the last time for this month that we'll be playing Dynamax Pokemon. Another reason why a lot of you might want to see the rest of Season 9 out. Um, 
And I'm gonna be I'm gonna be honest with you right now. I know there's a lot of people that don't like the Dynamax mechanic. I personally like the Dynamax mechanic. I think it's a good mechanic. I think it brings a different element to the game. Um, I didn't like Z moves, um, and I. I do like Megas. I do like Megas. I would love to see Megas return in uh, the the Diamond Pearl remakes. I mean, that would be phenomenal. But I do like Megas, so I'm not I'm not so so like against them going away. Although I am excited to play a format where it's a bit more like old school Pokemon. Uh, at the same time, I'm not like I'm not like yeah, it's the best thing ever or it's the worst thing ever. You know, I'm kind of in the middle, um, and I'm kind of excited to try a format out without it. So, um, but I don't dislike it. Let's uh, let's get the record straight. But it'd be great to hear what your opinions are on it as well. Whimsicott, Charizard, Tailwind, or Sunny Day. I would imagine Sunny Day. Uh, we can go for a Max Airstream. We've got to keep pace with this thing, and let's go for a Sludge Bomb into Whimsicott. Because we've got the Ockerberry, right? They're going to probably Sunny Day. But I think they'll be more obliged to probably Tailwind this turn and then Sunny Day the next turn. So if we can kind of keep track with our pace, at least if the sun does go up, it means Venusaur gets um, the boost. The boost with the sun. But you've got to imagine that Venusaur is the attraction here, which is why we could have maybe switched in Heatran. Uh, but I'm too busy talking about um, <coughs> Dynamax and all that sort of jazz. So... I've got a fly in my room and it's really annoying me. It's like attracted to the lights up here. So if I'm looking around, that that is why. Okay. Gigantamax, Charizard. What are we going to see? Tailwind? Yes. Makes sense. Can we take the attack with the Ocker? Maybe one. G-Max Wildfire. Ooh, I don't know. I don't know if we're, if we're not maxed. I don't know if we'll take this. This is where Heatran would have been phenomenal to come in take it we take it we're gonna get that sludge bomb off into the whimsicott which is huge because it means we can dictate the weather a little easier as well g max wildfire are gonna take down um i'm gonna take down the venusaur uh, the residual damage but i'm hoping that the sludge bomb we'll probably see a sash on the whimmy might be a jack button though you know why we oh my god okay well either way it works. Either way, it works because Venu's gone. Gone. It'd be nice to be able to get the uh, the whimsicott there, though. With the sludge bomb, we obviously just timed out. So not ideal start, but not the worst at the same time. Um. Okay. 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 What are we gonna do? If we bring in Heatran, Scorching Sands is the is the prerogative, right? Uh, but if we bring in Tita, I think what we'll do is the thing is we can't really bring in Tita. I mean, we can. I mean, we can bring in Tito. We we do bring in Tito now because I think the thing is we can airstream rock slide. We got the sash. Um, they have to sunny day in this situation, which is kind of all right to be honest. We go for airstream into the Charizard. Um, yeah, rock slide. I mean. The options aren't great. The the only issue would be obviously uh, when the Venusaur's in the back potentially. So let's see, let's see what they do. But I'd imagine, hmm, yes, yeah, Sunny Day, Sunny Day. They've definitely got Sunny Day. They have to. I think the concept of the team it makes sense with Wimmy. Yeah, there's a Sunny Day. Do they go after the Charizard? Uh, the 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 Tita. Does the Charizard go after the Tita? Max Quake. Okay, not ideal, but again, not the worst. Because it just takes us down to that Sash. The problem is it does uh, the residual damage uh, from the G Max. Um. Fire fire attack is going to be enough to um, take down. Tito here. We could have protected maybe. Might have been an idea to protect Tito here. And then we got the switch in. We got an advantage in Pokemon going into the next turn. But it's nice to be able to kind of get rid of both the Whimsicott and the Charizard. And kind of one fell swoop as well to kind of level the level the scores up going into this next turn. Now they do have Tailwind and they do have the Sun up. So if the Venusaur comes in it will be faster than our, our, um, our Thunderous which makes things very tricky for us. Um, I 
Now we, uh, and because of the salt vest, we're kind of a, a big target for a sleep powder. But then again, if they go for sleep powder onto uh, Thunderous, then, you know, they're going to be subjected to um, getting heat waved from a Heatran. So. How many turns of Tailwind have they got left? Plenty, I think. Two turns. Okay. They have to sleep out of the Thunderous. They have to. And Earth, probably Earth Power into Heatran. But that will give us the opportunity. If they're not sashed, then we got this, I think. Yeah, let's go for Airstream. And yeah, Heat Wave. Just because we got the boost of the sun here. And we need the double target attack, I think. It's probably going to help us out a bit more. There's the Earth Power. Okay, well, that's from Venusaur. So, I mean, we've got this now, I think. Even if they are sashed, but they may be. Oh, they're Cobra Berry. Okay. Uh, do you take this? Maybe not maxed. I like... Yeah, just about. Okay, so the Heat Wave going to help. Uh, the Tailwind doesn't really factor in against the Torkoal because it's so slow. And the Heat Wave should be enough to take down both. Well, it'll take down the Venusaur. It won't take down the Torkoal, but it'll do a good chunk. Reduce the damage of a potential um, eruption that could come out from it. Yeah. And then Heatran going to just sap that, sap that eruption up, which is exactly what we need. And... Um, Obviously, the, the wildfire residual damage, we don't take any damage on a Heatran. And now we can just go Earth Power and Wild Charge. And that will be game one for today. So a little bit clunky because I'm talking about other things. But I'm sure you can you can understand. But you can see the the, the, the very good like uh, ability, the, the you know, how the team can approach um, these hyper-offensive like Sun teams. Well, uh, and, I, and I mean, it's kind of been the th the theme all all series, you know, where we've had like this Defiant, th Thunderous with the Assault Vest. It does so well against these teams. Um, and Heatran, it's really something that I do think is very strong in this series. Uh, and it's it's kind of had like dips and flaws, you know, with, 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 you know, its usage. And I would like to see it have a little bit more of a run in the last kind of uh, end to series uh, nine, but we'll see. Anyway, that was their uh, first game. Good game to my opponent, and we'll jump into our next game of the episode. Okay, up next we have. Oh, we got another Sun team, but there is a little bit of hail in there, so there is a variation. It is a Charizard, Venusaur, Torkoal, Garchomp, Alola, Ninetales, and Mimikyu. So we do have a Trick Room switch in here. Obviously, with the Mimikyu, it is going to have access to Trick Room, so it can set up uh, something like the Torkoal, but predominantly this team's looking for the other side of the coin, the faster side. Um, Garchomp going to be one of those Pokemon that really benefits from the Aurora Veil if you can get it up with the uh, the Ninetales. Um, and it will cause us a lot of issues on uh, uh, Tyranitar end. So again, I feel like, like Thunderous isn't a bad option to lead with here. Um, but do we go down a Trick Room route? I don't know if we go down a Trick Room route. You know, we've got Max Steel Spike. It's going to help us a bunch against uh, the Mimikyu, the Alolan Ninetales uh, with Thunderous. We have to be very careful around that Blizzard, of course, as well. But we do have Titar to kind of disrupt that. We've also got Heatran to help us out with the Sun. Um, but we've got to bring Conk. The team's all about Conk, isn't it? Can Conk really do that well here? I mean, it can do. It can do some decent stuff but got to watch out for that Mimikyu in particular um okay so I think we'll go Heatran let's go Titar and let's go Conk let's bring the Conk to this one let's bring Conk see if we can get it going because I know the team if you read the the uh, Lattie's blog post the uh, the construction of the team kind of all was based and started from the Conkodur which uh, was identified as something that can do very well in this format so um it'd be nice to see it doing some work today even though we're kind of forcing it, we are forcing it. But with two games in an episode, sometimes a little bit tricky, right? Okay, well, the Charizard and the Garchomp coming out. Not great for uh, Heatran, gotta say. But, um, let's 
my opponent going to keep the Charizard in on the field? Maybe? I don't know. It's just, you, you know, the one thing that you don't want to really do in this situation is allow the, the, uh, the, the, the Garchomp to get a Sword Stance off, you know? Um, or we could go Max Airstream into Garchomp and go for... We could just Heat Wave. Potentially catch a switch in to the Ninetales. Uh, and just get some some damage onto the Garchomp if it decides to go for a um, decides to go for a Sword Stand, but it's likely to max here, I think, and go for either a Rock Fall or uh, we might just see Earthquake, you know, next to the Charizard. We may just see Earthquake, like Airstream, Charizard. Earthquake Garchomp. It could be a possibility, you know. But we'll soon find out. We'll soon find out. Here we go. Looks like it's going to be the Garchomp maxing. Oh no, it's a Charizard. Charizard and a Moon Ball. Nice. Okay, well. I mean, we'll get more damage onto the Garchomp, which is definitely helpful. Look at that Airstream. Get some nice fat damage into the Garchomp to start us off. We're going to see Wildfire then. Maybe. Flash Cannon into the Garchomp would have been the better play just to remove it. So there's the Earthquake. We have got the Sugar Berry. Uh, but the Charizard in this situation is kind of forced to, um, to go for the Wildfire. Well, the Airstream almost, you know, to keep pace. Um, with the Assault Vest, we'll take this pretty comfortably as well, you know. Um, and now the Garchomp in, in, a, in, a, in a tricky spot. Because we can, we can go for Max Lightning this turn. No, no, no. Yeah, we could Max Lightning. Into the Charizard and just Flash Cannon into the Garchomp. Because I think then they've got to airstream themselves, really. Which they could do. Okay, well, we're just going to see that max guard come out, which is fine. They're just stalling out our turns, which we don't mind too much. Flash cannon will get rid of the guard chomp. Big Tran. And I do feel like I've playing, been playing a lot of Heatran on the channel recently as well, uh, which might add to... The whole emphasis around Heatran. I don't know. I might be a bit biased. I love Heatran. It's definitely one of my favorite legendary Pokemon. And I'm really pleased it's been uh, included. Included in... Uh, oh, this is this is ideal, this. Because now, I think... Well, you know the detractions here. But the thing is, we've got Tyranitar in the back. So we don't really need to worry too much about this Charizard, really, in all honesty. So we can just Airstream and go for a Heat Wave here. Now, the, the issue is if the Ninetales decides to protect here. Now, this is a bad play from us, but I don't generally see Ninetales don't normally have um, access to protect. And they don't normally carry protect. So we're kind of safe in a lot of respects here where we can just make sure that we get rid of it before we can get the Aurora Veil up. Um, and like I say, with the, the, the Tyranitar in the back, we don't necessarily worry too much about the Charizard. Um... There's the airstream coming out and going to try and keep pace with us. Okay, well, it's the end of our max turns. Charizard's kind of done its job. It's not give the speed boost to anything. We've not give the speed boost to anything. We've got the weather kind of one in the back. And uh, it'll all come down to what my opponent's last Pokemon is, I guess. Uh, as we take a bit of chip from the hill. And then we'll have that extra um, wildfire damage as well. Let's bring in the Tito. Because <clears throat> it's likely that the, the Thunderous might go down soon. We could kind of engineer it to go down. So the Conquer, though, can come in and kind of clean up. Yeah, let's let's try. Let's try and see. I would imagine. Mm, what are we going to see? What are we going to do? We just go. <laughs> We're not going to see Conquer, though, this episode. I don't want to, like, mess around too much, you know. Like, there is a part of me now where I'm like, okay, we probably want to um, double in on the, uh, the, the Charizard here. Um, the Torkoal here because it's likely the Charizard protects. Um, or we could go... I'll tell you what we could do. We could switch into Concorder, but it means probably taking a 
bunch of damage, like unnecessary damage from the Torkoal, you know? So we're probably better off just rock sliding while charging. The Torkoal probably attacks, the Charizard protects 100%. This is why it would have been better to go into the um, the Torkoal here uh, with the wild charge and then the rock slide, which would have been probably enough, depending on the build of the, uh, the old call, to do the business. But we'll see. We obviously lose our sash, but a cheeky flinch here will kind of seal the deal for us. There we go. Get it. Am I the luckiest YouTuber, like, ever? Because, like, I mean, when we ask for it, we get it, don't we? Sash is broken on the T-tail. Um, and, yeah, I mean, now uh, the wild charge gets the, 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 the Charizard and uh, the Rock Slide. A single target? It's going to be very close. Gets a second protect. Can we get a second flinch? Come on, we can do it. This T-Tar's... This T-Tar is definitely uh, on the money here. I think we're going to get it. There we go. Let's see that flinch. Ooh, activate. And what is it? Figgy? Wiki? Not be a figgy. Citrus. Okay. Body press. <gasps> no! Okay. Well, we're all right. We're still all right. We've got Conk to come in. Thunderous should just have enough health now. Uh, oh, actually, the wildfire is finished, hasn't it? So we're, we're kind of all right. So Conk is going to have its time to shine. It's going to be able to come in and deal with this Torkoal. Wild Charge going to be able to deal with the Charizard. And Conk is going to have a brief appearance at the very end. Is it bad that I want to throw Conk up on the, um, on the thumbnail for the video? <laughs> we can't do that. It's like, yeah, it's the, uh, the ultimate bait. Well, it's featured for like one turn at the end of the game. It's been a pretty much a thunderous show today, but I think it's more uh, in line with the, the team overall, how well it kind of functions. Uh, we didn't really get to see that Trick Room mod today and the team Kong coming in and getting that Drain Punch. Just Tokol just hanging on. Uh, Burning Jealousy going to come out, but we'll be able to take that and then clean up with the Kong because it's pretty fat anyway. So, thunderous finally gone down after a lot of work and... Is this our last Pokemon, right? Yeah, I was just sketching out for a minute. I'm like, is that the last Pokemon? Why we now nah, let's use Mac Punch because we haven't seen it. And just just for the just for the fun of this. Um and we managed to pick up the win. So hope you've enjoyed today's episode, friends. It's been a bit more conversational today. We've been talking about potentially other things coming onto the, the channel as well. So um I hope you've enjoyed the, the the games we've had i hope you enjoy the team and if you do try the team out definitely let me know down in the comment section below and uh, drop latty a follow up on twitter like i say always making very unique and kind of innovative teams that are very fun to play around with so we'll hop over now and remind you all of the rental for today's team right friends here is today's rental team as we've seen we've seen pretty much most of the the pokemon excluding the dusclops that was the only thing that we didn't really get to see today but we all know what dusclops is there for it's a really interesting set as well with hairs i do like it you get the trick room up you prevent other things from setting up in front of you um and then you got the help in hand to boost that iron fist life orb conkle it's a shame that we didn't get it going but the teams that we faced today just didn't feel like it was the more kind of optimal thing to do and we saw how well things like the thunderous the tyranitar the heatran can shut down those sun teams and they did a phenomenal job for the most part two sun teams off the bat today um so it's not always likely but it is a common archetype in series nine so it's something that you're gonna see and this team handles it really well and it's got that nice mode to be able to switch around with the Dusclops Conk if you need it as well. Um, and we saw as well the G-Max Wildfire that the Venusaur can take non-max as well. A pretty huge, you know, for Venusaur. If we didn't time out that turn, we probably would have made a bit easier work of that first game where we could have just sludge bombed the Wimmy and probably removed it from the field, especially if we got the poison to overcome the Sash there. But we're going to wrap it up there, friends. Hope you've enjoyed today's video. Uh, like I say, Leave a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on Series 10. Dynamax in general. would love to hear. I know we start the conversation at the start of the episode. So do carry that on. Make sure you check out the poll. Have a vote over there. Let me know what you would like to see for the rest of the series. If you'd like to see Series 9 or Series 10, let me know. It'd be great to hear. But I do appreciate each and every one of you. Have a great rest of your day, whatever you're up to. And I'll catch you all for another episode very soon. So until then, friends, take care of yourselves and bye-bye.